Hi guys, hello and welcome to AP Biology. Um, we're gonna have a lot of fun this year and you're gonna learn a lot. It is a tough and rigorous course and I wanted to repeat some of the things we went over on our first day just to make sure we really uh, understand what is gonna be happening this year and also introduce you to the big main ideas of AP Biology. Now, I know we're all gonna be successful about you know learning science scientific things and trying new laboratory skills and even becoming better scientific thinkers or just global citizens. Um, but I know a lot of you are focused on doing well on that exam at the end of the year, but don't worry, we will spend a lot of time preparing to be successful on that as well. All right, so without further ado, let's talk about what is AP Biology. Now, AP Biology is designed to be a uh, college level intro to biology course for biology majors, um, actually two semesters long with lab. So essentially, if you were to be successful on the exam, this would mean you would end up getting eight credit hours in college. That's two courses um, for two different semesters. So it's really a big incentive to do well in this class. I mean, who wouldn't want to do well in AP Biology? I mean, um, but because there is a lab component to it too, that's four credits per semester for a total of eight credits um, that most colleges will accept. So that's, you know, money in your pocket right there if you intend to use that credit in college. Now that does mean because it is a college course intended for majors, um, it's going to be very, very rigorous. We're going to be introducing a lot of new things. Some things you'll be, you know, sort of relearning from what you learned back when you took biology the first time. Um, but we have to add a lot of you know, mathematical components to it as well. Um, you can't be a good scientist without being able to support your um, information with good data. Um, and we're going to be doing a lot more writing as well. So it's a lot a lot of rigor. Um, we'll be doing some reading um, very regularly with our textbook, which I'll talk about in just a second. Okay, so moving along. Um, materials for the class. This is very important. I did go over this in class. We're going to go over it again. Um, this is our textbook. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, you guys should all be able to order one of these online for very cheap. There is a newer, more fancy version. I don't want you to get this one. It's very nice. It's fantastic. It's the second edition of this book. Um, but the pages that we are going to be concerned about will correlate with this one. So please make sure... Okay, sorry there. I think I cut out because uh, it was out of memory on my phone. It happens all the time. So anyway, I suggest you get this one. Um, get it as soon as possible. I will be loaning you a school copy until you can purchase your own. Shouldn't be more than $10 if you get it on the right site. And then um, once you get your own copy, we'll bring this copy back to school and we'll take it and you'll be able to use it in class for group readings or problem solving uh, and other things. Okay. Moving on to our review book. Now, this is recommended but not required. I wouldn't focus on getting this too soon, um, but towards maybe the second semester, if you haven't picked one up yet, you can go ahead and pick one up to start reviewing for the AP exam in May. Four function calculator. Now, I know it's annoying because you guys all have these fancy graphing calculators, but you're gonna need one of these to practice on because this is what you're allowed to use on the AP exam. Uh, square root is okay. Um, general four functions, I got this for like a dollar at Walmart, I think. You can get a similar one anywhere you want and just carry it with you, it's very light. Um, but we need to be able to practice on these um, so that we know exactly how to do the calculations we need to do on the day of the exam. Now, so the most important things that you need for this class, I want to talk about those and then we'll get into our big ideas. Three things. Keep your syllabus handy. Now it's not very long and I intentionally didn't make it very detailed because I know nobody really reads every word of the syllabus and if you do, you're awesome. Um, but right here we have all the important things I've just mentioned, class policies, which I mentioned in class, um, and then our big ideas here, we should never forget those and a very brief testing calendar on the fourth page. So the test should not change over the course of the year barring any crazy weather or something nuts like that. So make sure you are aware of those. They are on that calendar or in that list specifically and also on our class calendar, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but that's exactly when our test will be throughout the course of the year. So you can plan ahead for that in case you have some other assignments or big events or life things going on. Um, so that's one, syllabus is really important. Number two is going to be our actual class calendar, which I'll show you on Moodle, or I might have already shown you on Moodle by now. Um, and you just want to check that every day. It'll say exactly what we'll be doing in class, what your homework was, and then what you need to be prepared to do the next day. Um, frequently, it'll say which lab we're doing that week as well. And remember, our laboratory period is separate. So please just keep an eye on that and know if you need to have any materials ready to go for those labs. Again, check it every day, maybe once in the morning, once at night, and you can figure out what's happening in class. All right, and last, most important thing um, 
is going to be our Moodle page. So make sure you're just using that as a resource. Everything we'll need for class will be up through Moodle. So if you have access to Moodle, to the syllabus, and to that class calendar, which is on Moodle, um, you're good to go and you are aware of everything that you need for class. Okay, let's talk about our big ideas and then we'll get into some skills and then we'll wrap this up because I know it's the first night of school and you guys have lots of other things to do. Okay, so when the AP Biology exam was redesigned a few years ago, they kind of condensed everything down into four major ideas. I'm going to be referring to those four ideas throughout the year. Big idea number one is sort of summarized in the term evolution. Now, it's not simply evolution, but this big idea is about how evolution drives the diversity and unity of life. And we're not going to be studying these big ideas in order. Um, necessarily, but we will be referring to several as the year goes through. Big idea number two can be summarized with energy. Now, this one is more about how all biological systems use free energy and different building blocks to grow, reproduce, do all their life processes. And so in this energy unit, you know, of course, we'll be talking about cells. Of course, we'll be talking about photosynthesis, cellular respiration, but we'll also be talking about different things and how organisms maintain homeostasis in order to stay alive. Big idea number three, life processes. Now, um, there's all these things that living organisms do, like, for example, um, they store, retrieve, transmit, and respond to information um, in different ways, but we do this primarily through a special molecule DNA. So, of course, here we'll be talking about protein synthesis, um, probably a lot of biotechnology. So, there's, this is a, actually a huge um, category, it's kind of all over the place. And finally, our big idea number four, interactions. Now, these are interactions on the organism level, on the species level, but also on the cell level. So we might take a, an entire environment and talk about the interactions in that environment. Or we might talk about, you know, how organisms might be hacked, uh, be hacked, behave or interact with each other in order to survive, or how cells interact and respond and communicate, which is very important to survival as well. Okay, lastly, we're going to talk about skills. So, of course, this is a college-level class, which means you're going to have to be doing college-level skills. One of those is note-taking. I will not be providing you with guided notes like you might have had from me or another teacher when you took standard biology or freshman year biology. Now, guided notes are helpful, but developing good note-taking skills and understanding what information is really important in a video or in a reading is going to be essential to the course. Now, I won't be checking your notes every day, but we will be having reading quizzes or sometimes, um, you know, a small review of what we did or saw in the video. So you do need to keep up with those. I will be providing you with a template and sort of guide you through how to take good scientific notes because it's a hard skill to master, but you are required to take your own notes. Um, and we'll talk about different ways and formats to do that later on. Math skills. So I know some people are like, I'm not a math person, but I love science. Well, you got to get over it because science is essential, or math is essential to science. Um, and we're going to talk about why. In our next video, we're going to be doing our just starting straight out with statistics and talking about like what is statistics and why it's important. So what I want you guys to do, this last little thing before the video ends, is to sort of research a little bit about what is statistics and why it's important, especially in biology. Now, this doesn't have to be an essay. I want maybe one or two sentences on your thoughts about this, and we'll talk about it tomorrow when we talk about our big ideas more. All right, that was a lot, but it's going to be a lot more over the course of the year. So again, welcome to AP Biology. I'm so excited to have you guys. See you later.